Um, welcome to my key search review. In this video, I'm just gonna sort of quickly walk over the things that I use and love in key search and give you a bit of a look around. So if you're thinking about getting it, you know what's in here. Um, but I think this will also be really useful for people who already have it and maybe just use it for one or two functions because there's quite a lot in here actually. And, and I don't even know or use it all, but I'll show you the bits um, that I like and that I think are really good for SEO on a blog or if you're building niche sites. So to start with, I'm gonna start with this tab here, the rank tracking. Um, I'm really just starting with this because I have a lot of websites and a lot of keywords on here and, and I don't feel like sharing all of them, sorry. Um, but I'll show you some and what how I use it. Um, so this is where Sharon.com, um, so you can choose what URLs um, and what keywords you wanna track. So you can look at your main keywords. If you have a lot of sites like me, I tend to just have my one or two main keywords on my niche sites that I wanna track how they're going. Um, where Sharon, I might track a bit more. Unfortunately, on the plan I'm on, you only get to track 40. Kind of wish I'd bought the higher price plan just so I had 100 I could track. But it's good to get an overall view. So all you have to do is like add URL and then add keyword. Um, and it will keep a track. So you, whenever you come in here, you can see where it's ranking currently. And you pick which country you want to check. So some of these are US, some are Australia in my case, but you can choose. Um, and it will tell you the last change, so it checks it every 24 hours. Now some of these look really big because I sort of just added them to illustrate for this presentation. Um, usually the movements are much smaller, but it can depend, especially when you've just sort of written a new site or a new article, it fluctuates a lot to start with. And, and you can even like a year or two later, you can still get some random fluctuations. So this tool is great for tracking how you're going over time, but if you log in one day and it suddenly changed a whole lot in a direction you don't like, like don't stress, probably the next day, it'll go back the other way. So um, yeah, you can look at all that. And there's some nifty things like you can also see like a little graph, um, so it'll show you over time. So I can see like, you know, this one I only wrote about at the start of the year. Um, so I can see that it's improving a lot now I've hit the first page. So it's a good way just to have a really quick look and just get an idea of how you're going overall. I really like it. Um, now other things I use, so in this link analysis, I use URL metrics and backlink checker. So URL metrics is a great way um, just to see sort of the metrics of a site. So for an example, we'll look at this site. Now remember metrics can be different depending on whether you're looking at the www version of the domain or without the www. So you tend to wanna look at the main version of the domain, but you can look at both just to get an idea. Um, you know, so I can see the current DA, PA, trust flow, citation flow, um, and some other things. Now, where this really is really good is actually if you're looking for expired domains, if you're building a PBN, it's a great way just to see all that data. So I use it mostly for that. Um, you could also look at competitors. You can put in like a whole lot in here at once to get an idea. Um, I like it for doing those types of things. Now, Backlink Checker um, can be good for looking at expired domains. Um, and it's also actually good for looking at your competitors. So if you're trying to do some link building yourself, um, you could look at your competitors and see what backlinks they have and then go see if you can replicate it. So maybe they just found like a really good comment link that was um, a do follow comment link. You know, you might want to go copy or they've guest posted for someone with great domain authority. You know, you could contact them and see if you could guest post. There's lots of things you can do like that to try and help get yourself some more links. Um, here I am just sort of showing my own site. You can just see like it will go through them, highlight whether they do follow or no follow. Um, but generally, you know, if you want to look at your own links, you should just go straight to Search Console in Google and you'll be able to see what Google sees. Um, so that's the better way to go. But there's a way you can use it to look for your competitors. So um, moving on to keyword research, which is what I mainly use and you would have seen on my previous video about picking keywords. So I'm not gonna go into really in-depth details here about how I use this to choose my keywords because I'll just link to my other video on that and my whole post on that so you can see exactly how I use this to work out um, what keywords I think I can rank for. But I do love this. So this keyword research one, you know, if you put in things to do in Malaysia, you can put which location you want. So because it's global really for me with a travel blog, I put that. If I was doing a niche site, I'd usually be just looking at US and I'm saying I want the data from Keyword Planner. You know, it'll show you the top 10 for that keyword, which is super handy. And I like how it color codes it. It means with a glance, I've got really good at just sort of glancing and I have a good idea already of how easy or hard it is. Um, it tells you the search volume up here um, and the score, the keyword difficulty score. 
and it also shows you over here so this top line um, like 34 is not too bad a keyword score you know the lower the better while it's green you're feeling happy if it gets down and blue down below even better um, so yeah, you can see all that information. You can click on this deep analysis and it'll show you like the top 10 in, in even more detail. So when I'm really wanting to closely analyze and see what sites are ranking, I find that super useful. Um, down the side here too, let me just, oh, here we go. Um, also the Google Trends, of course, which was on this screen too. So you can get an idea of when people are searching for it. So that can be really handy to know. Um, especially sometimes if you're looking at a keyword and, and there are ones, you know, with just a couple of months a year only people are searching for them. So that can be really useful information. Um, so you can see a whole lot in here. Um, so you can see then you can see the trust flow, the citation flow of the site, how old the site is, uh, whether they in contain the keywords in their title or description. Now this authority means the number of links that are do follow, so not counting no follow links. So that's useful to know too, just sort of to get an idea of how powerful they are. Um, and yeah, just lots of information to look at. You should watch my other video on exactly um, how to use that information to pick your keyword. Uh, and it also has all the related keywords here. So this is what I find super useful. If I decided looking at this that I was gonna write about things to do in Malaysia, I would come here um, and I would actually export it or I'd filter, sometimes I'd filter first. So maybe I wanna make sure, you know, I'm not interested in keywords that don't contain Malaysia. Like that one's got things to do in Kuala Lumpur. That's a separate article for me. I wouldn't want that. They need to contain Malaysia. I'd want them to be, you know, at least two words long. I don't just want the word Malaysia. Um, you could get rid of ones like maybe, like there's so many, like there's no point me even looking at ones that are less than 20. Um, so use the filter first to filter out whatever you can. Um, and then I like to download it when I'm gonna be using it for an article. So you can just do export to CSV, which I really like. Um, there's, I mean, there's lots of other things you can do here too. But that's how I use it. Now, another really super handy one. So there's all these choices here. Now, I must be honest, I don't know about most of those. They're not really relevant for me. But competitors keywords is like a really powerful one. And this is where you can enter another blog and see what they rank for. Okay, so I'm gonna enter nomadicmat.com, famous travel blog. You can see what he ranks for. But really what you'd wanna use here, and I didn't wanna do this because I didn't wanna put in a blog name and have the owner watch this and get upset with me but you would put in a blog name that's one of your competitors and what's really powerful actually is putting in a blog name of a competitor and a competitor that doesn't really do SEO very well okay so if they're ranking for something you feel like you could outrank them so say that was nomadic Matt he does do SEO pretty well so I wouldn't feel like I could outrank him but if it was someone that fell into that category I'd come here and especially like when they're ranking in the top 10 and especially like say that top three so say like cool places to visit in the US. If this was someone I know I'm good at outranking, then that would be a great article for me to go write for, right? I'm like, if he can get to number two, I'm sure I can get higher. So um, it's a really easy way to sort of get some ideas of articles you might be able to write to get Google traffic. Um, it's another reason why it's a good idea to sort of check how you rank yourself and who your competitors are in the Google space, who knows what they're doing, who don't. You know, there's some travel blogs and I'm sure it's the same in other niches out there that have really great domain authority, but, and they'll like do one keyword. They're still stuck on like the Yoast mindset of just put one keyword in the title and a few places and, and you'll rank well. And they don't do more than that. And when you discover them and you come in here and you look at all the things they write about, it can give you some really good ideas of articles that you could write where you could outrank them. So I really like, this, I don't use it enough, but it's super powerful. Um, now, the other functionality I use here is quick difficulty. Now, this is much like um, what we saw before when you're putting in things to do in Malaysia, so we could put that in again, but it will just show you for one keyword. So, um, so it's just things to do in Malaysia, the top 10 keyword difficulty search volume. So it's not showing you all the related keywords. Um, so it's just a bit quicker and easier, you know, if you just wanna have a quick look at how it is and if you think you can rank, I, I use keyword difficulty. Um, because the other thing in key search is that depending on your plan, you have a number of credits. So you can't just do like that other tab with, where we looked at competitors and, and the keyword research, bringing back all the related ones. You can only do a certain number of days a day. So I'm on the lower plan. So you can see at the moment, I've only got eight more today. I think I get 40 in total. Um, so I can only run so many of those. Whereas this keyword difficulty, I get 200 a day. So I've got 181 left. So it just means I can do a lot more of them. So it's kind of handy to use this tab when you can just to save your credits or you know, if you only need to see the top 10, then it's quicker and easier. So it's a good way to go. 
Now you can save things to your list so that you can just go back and refer them there. Um, there's this other screen which I've just been looking at. Um, so it shows you what things are trending in Google at the moment. Um, if you click on this, it takes you to what items in Amazon are trending at the moment pretty much and same way Twitter. So it might give you some article ideas too or what you might wanna put out there on social media. Now the other thing that's in here, um, like a whole section is YouTube research. Um, I don't do YouTube, I haven't used this, so I can't comment, but you can see there's a few different YouTube things. So if you're into YouTube, it could be worth investigating this tool as well. Um, so that's basically it, me talking super fast and going through this, but hopefully it gives you a really good idea on the tool. There are help videos and tutorials. I find they're really good when you're starting out, but if you have really specific questions, you know, just contact their support. They're really good, their support. They always get back to me. Um, like it's overnight for me probably because they're in a different time zone, but they're really great at getting back to me straight away um, with whatever I want to know. So don't be afraid to message them. And yeah, I, w I really think it's worth checking out Key search, it's an essential SEO tool for me. Um, if you already have it and you're not doing some of that competitive stuff, you know, investigate it a bit, you might really find that very useful.